There is a different kind of pressure on the young American team of Tiffany Scott and Philip Dulabon. They are not yet expected to compete for medals. They are here because their teammates, their training partners, Laura Handy and Paul Binibos, could not be. On September 29th, right here at one of the ice rinks on the campus of the University of Delaware, Laura Handy and Paul Binibos showed up for a routine morning practice. Just like they did every day, they took the ice to work on their short program. But this time, less than 20 minutes into the workout, Paul would be fighting for his life. It was a practice like this one, a daily run through, just another lift. We went up for a star lift and it felt a little weird. So um, I thought maybe he was going to put it down, but it just it happened like that. All of a sudden I noticed in his back, it just lurched a little bit, caved in a little bit. At which point he was on the side of his skate and down so quickly, I couldn't believe it. And he hit his, his backside, his back and his head, all in that order. And uh, a lot of noise at that point. And Laura, of course, screamed because we could see he was in trouble. He started convulsing and it was a nightmare. Until that moment, they were the third ranked pair in the United States training for a new season. But the impact of the accident fractured Paul's skull. For the next five weeks, he was in a drug-induced coma, at times near death, because of that one split second on the ice. He stopped breathing that evening when they operated on him. And his mother, fortunately, caught the machine that would, you know, regulate the breathing and uh, told them. And they operated on him that evening and removed a part of his skull so that you know, the uh, brain could expand a little bit so it could start a healing process. So uh, it was as close as I could ever imagine to having a fatality on the ice in pair skating. At Skate Canada last month, Christy Sargent and Chris Wirtz almost lost this lift. You could see his relief. In the 1993 U.S. Nationals, Tristan Vega and Richard Alexander fell hard. Fortunately, she did not hit her head. The couple got up and finished the program. In a 1994 professional competition, Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler took this fall, got up and skated the rest of their program. I'm on the ice on my, basically on my back and on my side, seeing Isabel coming down head first. Um, and so I got my hand underneath her chin and held her head up, um, saving her from hitting her face, obviously, but um, not not breaking her fall in any way. I could feel like if something was wrong, because, I don't know, he was just, I didn't feel him the same under. And then when I felt that his hand was gone from my hip, I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be a long fall. We know what we're doing, we're controlled in what do it, we're doing, but there's always a danger, there's always a risk. First we start and we stretch at the same time to get our timing in sync. And then I'm going to initiate the timing in the lift by tapping. And then I'm going to jump over his head like a cartwheel, not straight up, but over him. Mm -hmm. And then I follow through by just lifting her to the top. So I actually follow her timing. When she gets to a certain point, I add to it. To to Before you take it on the ice, you do this over okay, and here, over. I like to keep my arm right next to my ear. I don't want my arm to get outside because that's dangerous. And then, it, then I won't have the girl turning with me in the lift. I want to keep her right with me as I turn. I switch hips on the dismount. Here we go. Stretch. Voila. <laughs> but lack of training had nothing to do with what happened to Paul Binibos. In practice, a chronically sore back gave out at precisely the wrong time. His coach says that only one thing could have prevented this disaster. I would like to see skaters wear helmets, some type of a helmet, thin material, that's strong, that's not going to throw them off balance, and have both the girls and the boys wear the helmets. It's questionable to say whether Paul, how serious his injury would have been had he had a helmet on. It could have been anything from a, just a good old headache to maybe a, a light brain concussion. Nothing as serious as this. 
22-year-old Paul Binibos came home two weeks ago. He's lost 40 pounds, has some facial paralysis, and is undergoing intensive physical therapy. But he's expected to make a full recovery, and a week ago Tuesday visited his ice rink. Laura Handy was not hurt in the accident and recently began skating again. She and Paul are a couple off the ice, and yes, they plan to continue to be one on the ice. I enjoyed it, actually. It was fun to get out there. I mean, I missed having Paul out there with me, but um, I think he'll be out there again. He's stubborn, and he's a fighter from the word go. He's a real competitor, and... Uh, and I know he's going to be uh, very difficult to deal with when he comes back because he, he's going to want it done yesterday. And that's what he's all about. That's the kind of a kid he is. So if there's anybody that can make a comeback, it's him.